Uh, hey, welcome back to another Voxel Game Devlog on my second channel. Today we're gonna go in depth into my project, what I am working on. Why has it been almost two weeks since my last devlog? Well, I left off showing you guys me improving the combat feel and I thought I would continue on that. But I kind of got sidetracked. You might have heard of shiny object syndrome. Oh, what's that? Multiplayer networking. Let me go ahead and do that. Anyway, multiplayer networking is something you should get into your game early on because adding multiplayer onto a single player game is almost impossible. Now what I haven't made is a server and a client that talks to each other, you know, the usual way we do multiplayer networking. Now I built an entire server infrastructure and it's uh, also the reason it's taking me such a long time to get back with another video. I've been making a relay system, but before I explain how all of that horrible stuff works, it's fair to talk about what kind of multiplayer game am I actually making because I am not making an MMORPG. I'm making an action RPG that you can play with your friends or if you don't have any friends like me, you can play with strangers. Now it's very important that the server hosting won't cost me a fortune to host every month. So I've been looking on solutions to how do I make a solid network implementation but that it also is cheap. And with that comes some sacrifices. If you follow this project you know I was using Unity before and back then I actually made a server fully authoritative, including the physics. Problem with that is, one, it's really hard to implement and two, it costs a lot of money because the server has to run the entire world simulation. When it comes to programming, that is one of my most proudest things I've built because it involves implementing rollback, which means time traveling. You need to program the rewinding of time and then the replay with input. I'm not gonna get into how it works because it's a big pain in the brain. This time around I am not gonna do any anti-hacking measurements because it takes a really long time and I want to make a game. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have just peer-to-peer -peer connections? But there's one big issue with this and that is that the players knows each other's IP addresses. If you remember when Danny released his game Crab Game he was using Steam's peer-to-peer -peer networking solution and with that some big streamers got their IP address is leaked, which is a bad thing. So what did he do to resolve that? Well, he changed from Steam's peer-to-peer -peer solution to their relay solution, which doesn't let players connect to each other. Instead, they do it through a relay. That is what I have been doing. I am not gonna use Steam's relay solution. No, I have built my own entire architecture for hosting relay servers. I barely knew what this was before I got into this. So, you know, take everything I say here with a grain of salt. But I'm gonna show you guys the way I have implemented it yet. It is not complete yet. I'm after all showing you guys the things I'm building as I'm going along. So let's take a look on how my entire network infrastructure is going to work. I'm gonna show you guys some of the code I've written. I have literally written thousands of lines of code, so <laughs> we're not gonna go through everything. Just some things that you may find interesting, but we need some context first. So let me explain how it works when a player wants to create a game and when a player wants to join a game. Here's a crash course how it works. Here's a lobby. Okay, time to play some games. Player 1 connects to the lobby says, Hey, I wanna create a game. The lobby will return an error because we don't have a relay to host our game. So we boot up a relay server, connect to, to the lobby, and the next time the player comes, Hey, I wanna create a game. The lobby will see, Hey, I got a relay that can host a game. So the relay will then boot up a game server. It passes this game server info back to the lobby, and now the lobby can tell the player your game is hosting at 420 so the player connects to the game server and is happy the player can play the game amazing player 2 comes along hey lobby are you hosting any games yeah well i'm hosting the amazing game okay great i will join the amazing game the lobby sees that pass a message to the relay and the relay then goes to the game server and the game server asks the host of the game player 2 wants to join do you allow that player 1 wants to play with player 2 so they say yes they send a message back to the game server the game server passes it to the relay the relay goes to the lobby and the lobby goes to player 2 and says yes they accepted your invitation the lobby provides the correct address and now the player 2 can connect to the game. Amazing! That's a whole lot of steps. Why did I go through all of the hassle to design this whole system? Well, the beautiful thing about all of this is that this is a very scalable solution. Let's say Relay 1 is hosting 10 different games and it is starting to lag a little bit. Well, I can just boot up another Relay and that Relay can host more games. And the beautiful thing is that player's IP addresses are never shared with anyone, protecting the player. Another cool thing about 
about this whole system is that this is not a game specific program I have built. What happens when you are connected to a game server, that is up to your game. Of course this is just a peer to peer hiding IP addresses solution, meaning the game server doesn't process any logic, all it does is pass messages between the players. In theory I could make a server authoritative physics simulation, where all of the crunching has to happen on the player that is hosting the game. One con of doing this is that, well the latency will be much longer than if the server hosted the physics world, but we don't need to care about that, because what I'm gonna try to build first will just be players telling everyone else, hey I am over here, which of course will open up for fly hacks and all of that, but we're getting ahead of ourselves now. I decided to use a UDP networking library called Laminar. I picked this library because I've played around with it before and it has just worked fine for me, so that's why I'm using Laminar. Now the way I can make players talk to each other without sending the IP addresses is that when you connect to the lobby, the lobby will assign a unique string identifier to the player. The identifier is mapped to their IP address. Players can share their unique identifier and when someone says I want to send a game packet to xymnlopq5, my servers can then map that unique identifier to an IP address. I'm using a library called Nanoid for generating these global unique identifiers. When I'm testing my application I need to boot up the lobby server, the relay server and the player client. I quickly realized that my computer fan was spinning like crazy. So I actually made a Rust library to solve this called Might Sleep. The goal is to try to reach a target frame rate by sleeping. I made it open source so you can check it out if you want. I made it so you have two different modes, low usage and normal usage. So that when no one is connected to my servers, I can lower the target frame rate, giving my computers some space to breathe. Now, sending packets over the network is not the hard part about programming this whole solution. The majority of my code is about handling state. The chain of events that happens is massive and at every single step there is a chance of failure. Imagine for a moment that I request to make a game. I ask the lobby, the lobby asks the relay to host a game and the relay starts a game server. But let's imagine that before the relay has a time to send back confirmation it created a game, what if the connection between the lobby and relay is lost? There are two specific things that has to happen in this specific example. First the relay should console the game we just created, because no one can join it from the lobby. Second, the lobby has to realize that the relay disconnected and ask another relay to host a game and if that fails, the lobby should return an error to the player seeing that no relay is available. My solution to handle this large chain of events with fail states at every corner is to localize the problem. I make use of this pending request struct. And the moment we are expecting an answer in the future, we will register that to the pending request struct. If we don't get an answer within the specified time, we will invalidate the request and then we can react to that. When joining a game for example, there is a massive amount of steps going on behind the scenes. And at every single point I have this pending request. If we don't resolve the requests in time, everyone will clean up their stuff that they care about locally. I wish I could dive into this pending request code a bit more, but I've had some troubles trying to formulate examples that wouldn't take me 5 minutes to explain. That's all the code I'm gonna highlight in this video, but I am planning to make this open source, the relay code that is. That way people can help me find vulnerabilities, make it better, it's a win-win situation for both me and you to make this code public. But I've got some cleaning up to do before I do that. I am maybe a few days away from being able to implement this into the voxel game, I just have some cleaning up to do, time to get back to work, bye bye!